uh, l let me actually ex generalize the notion of how we calculate de determinants before. Uh, the calculation we did is actually a special case of how one usually calculates a determinant. Uh, but before we do the more general calculation, let's, let's do another definition. So again, we have an n by n matrix. We're going to define the ij cofactor, uh, which we're going to call cij. The cofactor of the matrix A, it's going to be take the in or take the ij co, uh, minor matrix, compute the determinant of that ij matrix, and then there's this factor negative one to the i plus j power. So you add together the entries, the ij position, and then that'll give you a power of negative one. And so I want to point out that the formula we had for determinants can be simplified if we use cofactors, like this right here, because we had the, the A11, that's the entry in the 11 one one position, then we had a plus determinant of A11, one one, the minor. And so using this notation, that's just a C11 one one, uh, cofactor. Then the next one's going to be A12 times C12, the cofactor again. And although there was a negative sign before, Right, the negative sign really is hidden inside of the cofactor because of this alternating factor right there. And so the determinant formula that we used before actually looks like a or i1 to n, where you get a1. I'm sorry, we should call this a j because uh, we're talking about we're talking about the column is changing. The row always stays the first one. So a1j times c1j. Uh, the formula with this cofactor uh, for the term becomes a lot more simple. And when it comes to cofactors, we do want to keep track of the sign plus minus plus minus plus. Um, and so it's just this, it's just the sum of the indices of the position. But a pattern that can be useful for people as you're working with cofactors is if you go along the first row, it'll look like plus plus minus plus minus plus minus plus minus this alternating scheme like we saw before. But if you were to go along any row, right, any row, it will look like plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, or it might look minus, plus, minus, plus, minus. It depends on which row you are on. The first row will do plus, minus, plus, minus. The second row will do minus, plus, minus, plus. The third row will do plus, minus, plus, minus. The fourth row will do negative, plus, negative, plus. So it depends on whether you're an even row or odd row. Um, also, if you look along columns, you get plus, minus, plus, minus, plus. You might get... Uh, minus plus minus plus same basic idea odd rows will do plus minus plus minus ne uh, even rows will do negative plus negative plus and so why why do we care about these cofactors well uh the way that people often compute determinants is actually using a technique due to laplace here what we'll call the laplace expansion so if we have an n by n matrix a whose entries are the i or the aij numbers right there then it turns out we can compute the determinant by doing a so-called cofactor expansion along any row or any column. Um, the definition of the determinant we took before was across the first row, but you can cofactor expand across any row or any column, and that gives you the determinant. And so if we were to expand across the ith row, we would have the basic formula right here. J would range from 1 to N, that is, you go across all the columns. You'll take the AIJ number and the CIJ position. And so what that means is the row would be fixed. You do the I throw, I throw, I throw. But the column changes. First column, second column, third column, nth column. And that's true for the entry in the matrix and the associated cofactor. But you can also expand across the Jth column, right? For which case the column then becomes fixed. Uh, that should be a one right there. Let me fix that. One, uh, A1j, C1j, plus two, A2j, C2j. Then it'd be A3j, C3j, A4j, C4j, all the way down to ANj, Cnj. We get this uh, closed form for right here. For which case we add up together all of the Aijs and the Cijs. And so when you compare these two formulas right here, uh, they almost look identical, right? If you look at the sigma, aij, cij, that part looks the exact same. The difference, of course, is in the dummy variable. When you have a fixed row, it's the columns that will change, 
the variable j. Um, if you have a fixed column, it's the rows that'll change. You have uh, a fixed j as i changes because you can expand across any row or column. Um, let's come back to the example we did earlier, that three by three example, and let's consider how we could compute the determinant if we expanded across the second row, right? So this time along, we're not going to expand across the first column or the first row. We're going to do the second row this time. So how does that work? Now, pay attention to the cofactors. The first row is plus minus plus. Since we're in the second row, it's going to be minus plus minus. All right. And so if we expand across the second row, we are going to get minus zero times the determinant of the minor, which if we take away the first column, we get seven, zero, negative one, negative six, right? But admittedly though, since, since the first number is a zero, we honestly could care less on what does the minor look like because zero times anything will just give us zero. So I'm gonna jump down there in just a moment, we get a zero. Uh, for the next one, we're gonna get plus three, right? The, the cofactor here is a plus. And if we keep track of things, right? Um, this first entry, in the row is the two one position. And two plus one gives us three, which is an odd power of negative one. The second position is the two two position. And so two plus two is an even number. Evens give us positive powers of negative one. And for the sake of later, we're gonna have the two three position. Uh, two plus three is equal to five, which is gonna give us a negative about right there. All right, uh, but let's go back to the to, 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 to doing the minors, right? The plus minus is part of the cofactor. Uh, if we were to kill off the second column, we're always killing off the second row, we get five, zero, nine, and negative six. Five, zero, nine, and negative six. And then finally, I didn't predict my negative sign perfectly there. Finally, we're gonna get minus, like we said before, zero times the minor, if we take off the third row, the third column, I mean, if we take off the third column, uh, the minor looks like five, seven, nine, and negative one. But I want to confess that I'm doing way much, way too much work in this expansion here. Because the first entry had a zero in the second row, I don't care about that minor. You just give them times it by zero. And because the last number in the row was a zero, this minor doesn't make a difference whatsoever either. It's only the middle minor that's gonna make any difference here. Um, this actually is reasons why I would want to expand across the second row because the second row has a lot of zeros in it. Um, if we continue on here, we got a zero for the first one, we'll get three times. We get five, mi uh, five minus, five times negative six, that's just a negative 30. Uh, and then we're going to get uh, we're going to get zero right there. And then we get minus zero again, right? The zeros make life easier for us. We like zeros when it comes to determining calculations. So we end up with three times negative, uh, sorry, getting a little ahead of myself there. Zero, three times negative 30, which gives us the negative 90, uh, which was the determinant we calculated before. The row or column you choose does not make a bit of difference on what the final result's gonna be. The determinant is unaffected by expanding across rows or columns, um, but the computation is affected, right? When you come to this matrix that you see in front of you here, um, there are some rows and columns that are much better than others. Uh, the second row was nice because it had two zeros. The third column would equally be nice to expand across because it has two zeros right there. Um, we first did the first row, which was nice because it had a zero in it. Um, worst case scenario would be like the third row. There's no zeros there. And then the second column, sort of worst case scenario. So if you can pick and choose your rows or columns, it's good advice to pick a column which has, or a row, which has a lot of zeros in it. So let's consider the following situation right here. So we have a five by five matrix, kind of big, right? And normally a, a, a determinant calculation can be pretty horrible because of this recursive definition. Um, if we look at sort of like the complexity of this, um, worst case scenario, we're gonna have to expand across like say the first row, maybe. Um, across the first row, you're gonna have to do five four by four determinants. 
Each of those four by four determinants potentially is going to be four three by three determinants, which those can turn into be three two by two determinants. And then if you keep track of all this, um, the difficulty of computing determinant grows uh, with the complexity of big O in factorial, which from a complexity point of view is horrible. This is not good. Uh, not good. The general calculation. But when there are zeros present, one can utilize a maximum row or column with zeros to simplify the calculation here. So notice the first column of our matrix has a three and lots of zeros, right? So if we cofactor expand that, we have to pay attention to the signs. We get plus, minus, plus, minus, plus. Admittedly, the signs of zero don't matter much of a bit of a difference, but we do care about the first position. This determinant will equal three times the minor where we take away the first row and first column, right? And that minor is 2, negative 5, 7, 3, 0, 1, 5, 0, 0, 2, 4, negative 1, and then 0, 0, negative 2, 0. All the other minors we don't have to consider because they all have a 0 in front of them in terms of the linear combination. So the other cofactors are irrelevant because of the factors of 0. So we really love factors of zero. With that original matrix, the, the fifth row was also a good choice because of the same principle. Uh, but I like the first column because uh, I'm less likely to mess up the sign of the cofactor. Well, for this now, uh, this next, this minor here, I want to sort of do the same thing again. Can I pick a row or column that has a, a lot of zeros in it, the maximal amount? Well, the first column, again, becomes somewhat preferable because we have a two in the first position and then zeros everywhere else. And so because of that, um, I can get three times two times a minor for which we take away the first column, the first row, and then our minor becomes one, five, zero, two, four, negative one, zero, negative two, zero, like so. So again, maximizing the number of zeros helps simplify this calculation a lot. Uh, so we get three times two, of course, which is six. Um, admittedly, that three should distribute onto all of the cofactors that showed up in the expansion. But because they're all zero, we didn't have to worry about them other than the first one. So now in this three by three minor, which row or column do we care about? The first column does have a zero in it, which is nice. Um, and... I can also notice that the, the second, not the second, the, the, the third row has a bunch, has two zeros in it. So that is more preferable than the first column. But I'm actually going to elect to choose the third column there um, because it has two zeros, which is nice, but also has a negative one as opposed to a negative two. So I kind of like that a little bit better in terms of multiplication. So let's pick the third column to expand across. Um, we have to be careful about our cofactors. So I like to kind of play this as like a little maze we're playing with our cofactor signs. So we start off with a plus, and we're looking for a path to get to the numbers we care about. So we have a plus, we have a minus, we have a plus, we have a minus, we have a plus. Right? And so, I mean, we, we, we can make this little, this little path along the matrix with our plus minus is alternating each step we take. Admittedly, I mean, we could do this just by the positions, right? This first one is the one, three position. One plus three is four, which is even. So we get a plus. The negative one is in the two, three position. Two plus three is five. That's an odd number. So we get a minus. And this is in the three, three position. Three plus three is six which is even, so we get a plus. That works, but again, I always visualize this, this path of plus minuses down the matrix. So um, because of the zeros there, we don't have to worry about any of them except for the, the one in the, uh, the two, three position right there. So we're gonna get six times, the cofactor sign is negative one, but we times that by negative one. And then we times that by the two by two minor, where we're going to take away the third row, third column, and then we also take away the second row. So we get the minor 1, 5, 0, and negative 2. Of course, negative negative 1 is just a plus 1 right there. And so times that by 6, that will be a 6. And then for the last part, since it's a 2 by 2 minor, uh, the determinant, we can just use the formula we had from before. 
uh, for which case we get 1 times negative 2 minus 5 times 0. And so that simplifies to be 6 times negative 2. And so we end up with a negative 12 in the end. And that's the determinant of this matrix. Whew! 5 by 5. We potentially had to do like 120 of these things. But because of our selection of the zeros, we actually are able to calculate it um, not too bad. Not so horrible of a calculation. Now, I want to mention that uh, the example we just did was nearly triangular, right? There were a lot of zeros below the diagonal of this matrix. And so one could actually imagine how one does the, the determinant of a triangular matrix. In fact, the determinant of a triangular matrix is just going to be the product of the, the diagonal entries. So for example, um, if you had the matrix, let's say, 2, 5, 3, 0, 7, negative 4, and 0, 0, negative 2, because of how the Laplace cofactor expansions work, one only has to worry about the diagonal entries. The determinant will just be the product of those diagonal entries. And so therefore we get 2 times 7 times negative 2, uh, which turns out to be negative 28. Triangular matrices are a cinch to calculate determinants for. We like triangular matrices for that reason.